I'll call this uh, working session to order. This is something you don't see very often and you won't see very often. The uh, council in working session on TV and on the internet, we very often do these in uh, another room, always public meetings, but, but they're very informal. So those of you that haven't seen one before, if you haven't watched them, well, been with us during these times, you'll see us. Um, we aren't going to take any action. We will hopefully come to consensus on some items, but um, we tend to try to call each other by our first names, although we're kind of like trained horses. Sometimes we can't really get out of it, especially when we're in this situation. So um, we'll just keep it as informal as we can and uh, move forward with the agenda that we have. Um, that being said, we will start with, we're looking at an introductory video to help folks understand what's going on when they come to a council meeting. So Jim David, would you talk us through that video? Sure, this is actually the latest and greatest of the video remarks. Uh, that's gonna just kind of start the informality of this meeting. Good. Um, but this has been revised. Uh, many of you have provided uh, guidance on this document. I should start off by saying uh, that uh, both counselors Rolfing and Staggers had participated in the development of this along with staff from multimedia. Um, we've incorporated some of your changes. Uh, we do have uh, later, late this afternoon, we had some additional changes that are, that are sound and probably should be incorporated into this. So there will be an additional draft for everybody's consideration. What I wanted to bring to your attention uh, is the portion that discusses the equipment is also available for visual or presentations. I'm going to shift it down here a sec. Part of the goal is to try to keep this as concise and take as little time as possible but provide the greatest amount of information. So one of the ideas would be to eliminate the underlying portion and to instead include it on the city's website uh, on the council's main page. And what we, would, what we would actually do is on the upper right hand side where we have some key resources for the city council, add a link that would, be, that would state something the effect of uh, similar to what you see there on the bottom there, presentations for council meeting. We could include the script but also include the information about how you can uh, provide or utilize the public computer in developing a presentation. Uh, just kind of simplify it. Right now that link just has a, a, a memo on directions for presenting and utilizing the, uh, the staff uh, computer. So those are some of the options uh, that could be looked at, but I defer to, uh, to your Any thoughts decision. from anybody? I guess I would agree it's too long to start with, kind of my gut. I don't want to listen to it. Of course, we're going to have to listen to it every week for, you know. So the shorter the better, right? Um, that's not a bad place for it, but would it be, clarify for us, Jim, on the black part of the, no, it just went away from me, on the black square on that page? It would actually, right now it is uh, presentations for council meetings, and that is a, it's a PDF that talks about utilizing uh, the public computer. We would actually move something to the upper right hand side under key resources. Right now it has a 2013 city council meeting calendar. Uh, council district maps, council members. We would maybe just create a general how to address the council or important information regarding city council meetings. It would include not only directions for using the, the computer, but also the script, basically, okay. about first, second readings, things of that nature. Kenny? Yeah. The, the, Kenny, did you have a comment? Sorry? Yes, I do. Too hard to uh, be. <laughs> no, it's that's too okay. hard with the microphone. Jim, system. could we not have like a little live video clip when when we open up the city city oh. council page? Yeah, and like a little live video clip of whoever in the staff is doing this can actually that would be the first thing you hear when you open up our page, or you have the opportunity to. Here, this video that we're talking about is yes. that what you're thinking? Okay. It could. Thoughts, yeah. comments? If I could, I would add the, yeah. uh, I like the opportunity of if they wanted to watch it, they could, but not the, every right. time. Yeah. Okay. We, could, we could have the video actually a static video. I don't know if that's the correct terminology, but on the right-hand side where you know to click on it uh, if you're interested in listening. I, I forgot to add that we did remove the um, rebroadcast times uh, from the script just because those are in flux and uh, we don't want to have to retape this thing. 
mm -hmm. constantly. Good. Any other comments? So you're going to have a couple more changes to it, and yes. we'll see it one more time before it gets taped? Yep. Food. If you like, I could present it at an informational meeting, the final oh, version. Sure. Sure, because we're not going to do another work session for a while, so information will be an yeah. appropriate place for it. Um, have, have we decided who drew the short straw to be the person to uh, do the presentation? Um, I believe one of the assistant city clerks. I'll defer to Lori. Right. Tamara Jorgensen actually had this idea a while ago, and I forwarded it on to Jim, so I thought I would offer the opportunity to her first, and she's thinking it over. Oh, good. So, great. All right, any other comments on that? We'll let staff kind of manage that through then. Great, thank you, Jim. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for, the CIP surplus, we're gonna continue in conversation. Dave Bixler is gonna help us with this, our budget analyst. Um, you have a revised sheet in front of you based on our, is it revised? Similar. It is not revised, it will be. Okay. Once I have an interactive sheet that we'll be looking at. Um, talk to the directors and they will be here to direct it or to answer any questions and uh, there's been some modifications to some of the projects on the list some of the prices have gone down um, based on the um, bids coming in more favorable and uh, Mark Cotter can talk to those and uh, I'll go ahead and pull up the spreadsheet okay and then Dave while you're doing that would you also well now you walk away from the microphone but would you also remind us because I didn't bring my notes, or did somebody bring their notes from the other day? Which, which ones are sort of the go for sure, and what does that add up to? Do you want to start with that? Do you have that on your spreadsheet? Yes, it's the ADA. All the ADA items, right? ADA accessible bus stops for transit. The three ADA items came to 436000 ADA curb ramp, various... Tell me, Kenny, you found three. Tell me where the other one is. Is uh, it the ADA lift chair for them? Then we, yeah, there was three. There was the curb uh, ramp cutouts, the ADA accessible bus stops, okay. and the ADA chair lift. Okay. But what are the three? Good. I thought we had had pretty much a consensus on uh, Marion Road also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is Which that what I'm hearing from the group? And then the uh, traffic uh, signal installations at 26 33rd and Saratoma. That's one we had questions about. And we had, yep. Yeah. And then the, uh, what was the other one? Intersection. The intersection traffic capacity improvements, 6th Street, 41st and 37th. Okay. Those were the four that I think got the, or that I had written down had the most discussion and right. probably approval, but some still had a few questions on those. I think that's right. Good. Are you ready, Dave? Okay. Remind us now, Mark, Mark's going to talk to us about some of these numbers have changed or are going to change, correct? And I'm hearing yes from Dave. I apologize to those folks that are listening on TV. This has got to be a little weird, but hang with us. We'll make it very simple. <laughs> Good. We like simple. Um, uh, uh, David mentioned that the Marion Road, we actually revised down from 650000 to 550000 We've bid two similar projects so far. One came in at 192000 That was the first mile of Marion Road. And another one on 60th Street North in front of Citibank between Minnesota and Cliff that came in at about 272000 That one's more involved. And so we feel uh, confident that uh, even though it's a little later in the bidding cycle that we can revise that number down from 650 to 550 and accomplish two additional miles of Marion Road. Wow. Okay. Questions for Mark about that one? I think that answers it, doesn't it? I'm a big grin from Cliff. Okay, and? The, the traffic signal system installations, these um, over time get warranted based on the amount of pedestrian uh, traffic and or turning movements. Um, highest need right now is 26th Street and Red Oak. Um, when 26th Street was constructed between Sycamore Avenue and Highway 11, uh, we put all the underground uh, facilities in, the, the conduits, the the foundation systems. 
Um, and just it's very important um, that we do uh, meet those warrants. Now there's been quite a delay in people uh, turning in for that uh, Red Oak School uh, out there and so that's 60,000 and then as they go down uh, those are both for school crossings 33rd and Sycamore there's been a slight re uh, drawing of the boundaries and there's there's kids crossing at 33rd Street in Sycamore that's a fairly open stretch people drive a pretty good clip uh, and so that one's the next priority and then last would be um, helping people cross uh, Sertoma to get to Roosevelt. And so from our priority basis would be the first one as they're listed, uh, if you choose to fund one or all three, okay? It's, from our perspective, the highest priority is 26th Street. Okay. okay. Is the price the same? It's, still 200. Um, it's, it's actually, we revised it, um, and so 60, 90, and 90 is 240. So we went down on one, we, we went up slightly on another. Um, A Street from Fairfax to Cliff Avenue, um, if I could just maybe speak to those. Um, we were able to purchase that flower box property at A Street and Cliff Avenue. That's been an offset intersection. There's been a number of accidents over the last three years. Um, and so we wanted to, now that we've actually purchased the property, if there's an ability to accelerate the design, um, that would allow us to get those plans in place, potentially purchase a little additional right away. Um, those last two blocks of A Street from Cliff back to the west, um, we've intentionally just done minimal maintenance on it because we've been waiting for this property to become available. Um, earlier in the year, we were able to purchase that. And so this project would allow us to do the design and potentially purchase uh, any additional remaining right of way that we need to uh, make that offset intersection, uh, you know, a well designed, um, lined up intersection. Oh, then, do you want to speak to the intersection traffic capacity improvements as well? Uh, certainly. Um, was the adaptive traffic signal systems, was that spoke to or not? Um, was that one we had questions on? That? We didn't question that one as much as the intersection traffic capacity improvements, but you can address both if you'd like. Okay. Um, the adaptive traffic signal system, that's really the new technology in moving traffic. It optimizes traffic flow. Um, ultimately, we had that initially in at 375. We would revise the total down, and I didn't communicate that uh, uh, clear. Um, we would revise the total down from 375 to 210. And and only recommend to do East 26th Street at this point in time. Um, we've sent tra uh, Heath Hofteaser, our principal traffic engineer. Um, he, he went um, on a trip with DOT and Federal Highway to larger met uh, metropolitan areas in California area and really started to see where some of these initial installations happen and essentially uh, if you coordinate a, a system of intersections like Minnesota Avenue, for example. Um, what Heath does is that they take, they take traffic counts at every intersection and between them, and then they put them into a model, synchro, and they model the optimum way to move traffic in that entire platoon from one end of Minnesota in the morning and then ultimately in one platoon on the way out of town at night. Um, that's my military background, sorry. Uh, now what adaptive technology can do, it, it, it doesn't allow you to just set um, timing specific for a corridor. It really allows you to smooth into peak traffic and smooth out of peak traffic better. Um, it recognizes, you, you put the pucks in the pavement, it essentially recognizes when traffic is where and it can on the fly adjust timings um, uh, to best move traffic. And they're starting to do the studies now in these larger metropolitan areas about uh, how much better traffic flows, the amount of fuel savings that people see because they're just they're not um, platooned up in at intersections they're moving more smoothly. Sometimes side streets you have to wait for your coordinated timing before you can make one or two people can move out of those areas. Um, and an adaptive not only moves the main line, but it, it helps move those side streets as well. So this would be our first adaptive traffic signal de uh, deployment, and, and 26th Street would be a good uh, test of that. Initially, it would go from Cleveland Avenue 
uh, to Highline, um, and then if that works, then it would get further extended out on 26th Street. But the initial request would be 210,000 for East 26th Street. Okay. Uh, downtown plan, tree plan and replacement, just an interesting point that as you drive throughout the downtown, it's a lot, it's heat, it's, it's a difficult environment for trees to exist. Um, and we've also have a number of different types of tree planters that exist throughout the downtown. And you're starting to see several more have had to actually take the trees out because they've died. And so this would write a short study on how do we, how do we take what we have, map them, um, come up with one consistent tree planter design and then potentially build about two or three replants so we can get uh, this process started because we've got we've got to be able to address those at some point in time. It's not a large dollar amount. We can plug that into a future budget uh, if necessary. Just wanted to bring it to your attention. Starting to get some feedback that we've got some planters out there with no trees in them. Okay. And then intersection capacity improvements. Um, uh, Heath and his team, we really challenged them, let's maximize what we have. And so they've identified three uh, intersections, 6th Street and Sycamore. So this would be um, if you're southbound to go westbound. So it would be um, garnering some land from, and I've got, if we could switch over to that if it's necessary, we've got a graphic. But it would be for... Um, All right, so the top one is at Washington High School at 6th Street and Sycamore Avenue. It would add a right turn lane for people going southbound to westbound. The second intersection is at 37th and Minnesota. That's the fire station. That's headquarters. And that would add a, there's so much traffic that comes out of Hy-Vee, and it would just really allow that intersection to function much better. And so it would add a right turn lane for westbound to northbound. And then the last, and the nice thing about the top two is they're both public entities, the fire department and the school, so garnering the necessary right away would be, we think, uh, pretty straightforward, or we'd hope so. And then the bottom one is at 41st in Minnesota, and so that'd be working with a, a current property owner, but to, again, get more traffic through that intersection to design a right turn lane um, for eastbound to southbound. So. That amount of dollars would actually just do the design and then we would program it into uh, the construction period. Okay. Okay. Questions, any other questions for Mark? I think that hits the ones we had the most concerns about. Okay, great. Thank you. Other specific questions from council on this list? I guess I do have one question. Yeah. I have one question for Mark. And that is, from time to time, we hear a lot about traffic problems on 60th Street North. Uh, but here you're saying, well, we, that's not a priority right now. Can, can you say something more about that? Well, um, you know, our, the, the issue out there is really capacity. There's not, there isn't very many intersections to hamper traffic. It's a capacity issue. And so we're working with the DOT because that'll be a joint project. We actually studied and, and wrote the plans for improving 60th Street from I-29 all the way east to South Dakota 100. Uh, it's a long-term, multi-year project. It'll likely exceed $60 million. Um, we are going to get started in the five-year plan um, right up next to I-29. Um, but ultimately, we don't think a coordinated traffic signal system would add much value at this point in time. There was some initial talk about it. That's why it got put on the initial list. But at the end of the day, right now, it's about lanes. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of grading. There's a series of bridges out there. There's a railroad crossing. And so at this point in time, that's why we took it off, is that we just we went back to the team and said, really, are we going to get the value out of this here? We'll certainly see it on 26th Street from Cleveland to Highline because not only do, does that section of 26th Street move a lot of traffic on the main line, commercial driveways and side streets that we believe that this new adaptive system would um, better move traffic. 
Thank no. you. Yeah. Okay. Jim? Yeah, I, I guess I just have a question for the fire chief okay. on one here, if I might, on the, uh, if you could just, uh, yeah, please, yes, please, Jim. The station alerting system replacement, can you just explain that again? Sure, the station, Jim Sedaris, fire chief. Uh, the station alerting system, the original system was put in in 2004. It's an analog system and it will only handle 10 stations. We're currently building our station 11, we're looking at station 12, so we have to have a different system to alert all the stations together. Uh, the current system will not do it. So the new system that we're looking at doing would be a voice over internet system. So it would integrate all the stations together. It wouldn't be just one station we're putting online, it, it would have to be for the whole system of stations. So that's part of it. It, uh, we're not, you know, I don't know why it was purchased like that when it was in 2004. But uh, it, that's a big shortcoming for us. So um, the other thing, there will be some, some savings because currently we have to have a, a portable or a, a radio system in each station. We'll get rid of that. Now we'll save about $33,000. So there, there is some cost savings, but uh, it's an expensive system. And we're just, the good thing is, uh, don't kill the messenger, but by being diligent, uh, our division chief, Pat Warren, who's overseas in administration, found this before we found out this is gonna be a huge problem when we start building the station. So we, we found out ahead of time. Uh, so that's the good news, but it's expensive fix. Okay, then remind us, there's a time differential between when station 11 comes on and when this is actually scheduled in your CIP, right? It's scheduled currently in the CIP in 2016. And station 11 comes on when? 14. We'll be building in 14. And, and we also have to redo all the stations too, because it's not just a one station. Okay. The whole system needs to be redone. Okay. Other questions for Jim? Yes. Um, Councilor Karski's first, then Rolfing. Um, Sorry. Councilor Anderson, Kenny and I were talking to the chief about this fire, the station alerting system, and we came to the realization that it's not, like you said, about that one station. It's about 10 others that Correct. we really need to get this equipment in so that when that one's built, that they can be talking at the same time. And if we wait, we're really not benefiting ourselves. No. And I can see where doing this now could be very important. Um, that's what I had for the chief, but I did have one yes, for Mark. Yes, you did. You, you asked mind. earlier. If, yeah. Can I, let me grab Rex on the chief and then we'll switch okay. around. Okay, Rex, go ahead. Can I ask about the, the tractor? Yes. Is this a, what, can I ask, I might as well ask, just ask what it's for. Okay, we currently have a tractor at the training center. The tractor we, we currently have is 27 years old and it is no longer working. Uh, engines out, hydraulics are out, drive trains out. The repairs would total $17,000 for that. We currently use that, we have at the training center, we have a lot of uh, culverts that will move, heavy steel will move for our training portions. We'll move uh, things up to the third story of our training tower, we'll move cars. So really it's not necessarily a tractor, but we're looking more of a teleboom or a telehandler is what we're looking at getting. The good news is, uh, new, they're $72,000. We're looking at a used one, and the used one would be uh, $45,000. Uh, we have no other way around it other to purchase it. There are a couple of other options. We can um, rent one, cost $350 a day to rent one, and we look at uh, using it about 60 days per year, and that comes up to $21,000 a year uh, to rent one, or over the life expectancy of a used one at 15 years would be $315,000 yeah. over that same. That makes much sense. Yeah, so, uh, and then we can also lease one but again, we're, we're spending to lease one. The lease price was uh, $14,000 per year to lease one. So we're kind of getting into that expensive cost. Okay. Okay. That, that got you for that. Then I'm going to Jim for the chief as well. Jim, you mentioned the used one for $45,000. Right. And you said that has a life expectancy of 15 years on the used piece of equipment? That, that's what we're estimating. It will be a, a minimum of 15 years out of it, maybe up to 20. We got 27 out of our last one, but 15 years would be the minimum. How old is this piece of equipment, and has it been reworked so it's in good condition? I can't tell you that unless, do you happen to know that, Pat? Yeah, come up since we have microphones. Pat Warren, Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. Um, yes, we received uh, 
available equipment and specification from the local equipment dealers in town and I have all of that information electronically if you're interested I can send it to you. Yes it has been um, refurbished um, and so it's been reviewed by our, our mechanics in case we are allowed to proceed and it's something we're very comfortable with last at least 15 years. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on the fire items? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. And then, Councilor Karski, Dean, you had something for somebody else. Yeah, Mr. Crowder for Mark, if you don't mind. Twenty Sixth Street. Um, from my involvement with urban development, I know there's a lot going on with the state and highway and reworking that whole thing. I hate to put $200,000 into the ground and plow it up in four or five years if the state's going to be reworking that entire intersection. Are we doing the right thing there? That's why we're going to start at Cleveland and then go east to Highland. Go east, okay. Yes. Okay, so, so this wouldn't be right at the interstate, it'd be further east. That's right. Okay. We would expect um, that once those improvements are done, um, we would expand it likely over at least a Cliff Avenue and there'd be, there'd be a cost to that, but um, I think that we'll learn a lot about them in the, in the coming years, just getting it east of Cleveland. Okay, and then the second thing, on the intersection traffic capacity improvements, yeah. the 75,000, did you say that's shovel ready or is that design work? That's Those are design. That's just for design, that that's won't right. get it done. That won't get it done, that will ultimately design it, and just like we do, whether it's uh, expansion or reconstruction um, we continue to bid projects and ultimately if there's dollars available and the plans are on the shelf we would go to the field with it yeah okay. thank you yep okay how are we doing Cal uh, Jim I have one for assistant police chief Patty concerning the generator upgrades if you could just speak to that please Patty Lyon assistant police chief uh, you have eight hundred thousand dollars. Is that for the for a generator? Yes, it is. <laughs> Don't ask me what kind of generator. I just know it's a, a generator upgrade that will be able to run all of the operations in the law enforcement center. The plan is to take the old generator that we currently have and move that over to the Gray Bar building. Okay. It does this. Uh uh, this generator, if not, I know it's a uh, high priority for you, if not approved now, is it plugged into the plan for next year? It's plugged in for t 2015. 2015. Kermit. Yeah, Patty, you said that it would operate all the operations of the uh, facility. Uh, what do you mean by operations? Will there be lights on in the entire building or just exactly what? Well, in a, with the ice storm that we had recently, we lost power in our building where the only thing that was working was uh, the little the backup that we have for the EOC. And that's just in one corner of our building. Mm -hmm. The rest of the building went into emergency light mode. Um, it was dark. Mm -hmm. Computers weren't working. Uh, we had a detective who was in the middle of an interview that had to move his interview to a lighted uh, an office with a, a window in order to conduct that interview. So with this new generator, would the building be entirely operational then, or? Yes. Oh, okay. I was, if I might, I, I was in the EOC when that power went down, and there are three rooms in the EOC, I believe, with the Homeland Security right. grant that he got that, that is serviced by that generator, but yeah, everything else went down. Everything else went down. Our front desk area was still had power, um, and that was, they were able uh, to be able to say, with the phones and the computer, but the rest of the building was dark. Uh, chemistry lab, uh, every place else was dark. Okay, any other questions for Patty? Kenny? Chief Lyons, I know you may not know this. Is the reason why that uh, this generator needs upgrade so soon? I mean, we got a new building here pretty much. Uh, is it? basically just at the end of its life cycle or is there repair problems with this generator? I mean, since we're going to move it over to the gray bar, it sounds like maybe it just wasn't right design for the building. My understanding is that it just, uh, when the plans were made, it was just enough capacity to run the emergency mode. Uh, 
they did not at the time of the building. Um, well, you know, things we pretty much every desk has a computer on it now. Back in that day, you know, that computers and we weren't uh, using uh, electronic record management systems then. Everything has moved to electronics, so I think back in that time frame when they were making the plans, they just probably didn't think that we needed more than just enough to, to operate the lights. But otherwise, it is operating as designed right now. Yes, yes, and it would be, I believe, the right size. Um, Eric Jelkin from Facilities is here to speak to the actual capacity um, of the generator, but it would be uh, the right size generator for the gray bar building. Thank you. Okay, count, um, Greg first and then Jim. Oh, well, thanks, Michelle. You're welcome, <laughs> Greg. Against how we're so casual, <laughs> Patty. You can't stand it. <laughs> the, uh, as I understood it, just on that generator issue, that uh, when the building was built, um, there was opportunity to save money, just like in any building, and that was a place where they found to save some money. and. Certainly, you'd do it differently if you could, and now is that time to correct it, or potentially a time to correct it. Okay, Jim. That was exactly what I was going to mention. I did uh, have a chance to talk with Sheriff Milstead uh, when that power went down, and he says, "I remember what happened after 9/11 with Homeland Security grants. That was area that was cut when they built a facility, but because of 9/11, they were able to put in the EOC um, and power up those three rooms." Uh, for, emer for emergency operations, and uh, that's what they did. Uh, the generator's in good shape, good condition. It's just not big enough for the whole building. Okay. Any other questions on the generator? Thank you. Then there was one other item that I recall from the other day that we wanted to ask about, and I know that Jill Franken is here from Health Department. The shell space build out. Do you want to talk to that for a minute? Jill Franken, Health Director. The area that I'm, uh, we're looking at for the shell space build out is up on second floor of Health and Human Services. It was one of two spaces that was left un, unfinished when we moved in in 2007. Uh, the first space that we did complete and build out uh, was a couple years ago and we used our dollars to do that to add three additional exam rooms. And then uh, that left still this other space unfinished. And um, with continued growth in our operations and services and looking and planning for the future opportunities, uh, we would see this as a really good option for us to just complete this space as well for um, several uses that we could see a mix of some open um, cubicle space as well as a couple offices to be able to relocate non-clinical um, health services if we needed to open up some of our clinical offices for exam rooms, for example, or additional mental health counseling office, um, or for example, when uh, some of our future planning includes uh, expansion of some of our pharmacy services to offer more access to affordable medications for our patients. So those would be some of the things that we are looking to do into the future and getting this uh, space built out will allow us to do the, some of that. Great, questions for Jill? Okay, good, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Did we cover everyone we invited, Dave? Okay, all right, time to start making a list, guys. Checking it twice. Michelle? Yes, Greg. <laughs> Remembering we're in a work session, I'm sure people are picking this up in the middle and going, what is going on? <laughs> I just wanted to start the, uh, maybe the negotiating, if I could, uh, right? Start yes, go for yeah. it. Start the bidding. Uh, <laughs> who'll give me 200? Who'll give me 200? 200? <laughs> oh, okay, so, you know, over the years, I've been a pretty staunch advocate for spending all this money on streets, right? Remember? But I've always given in to what the group <coughs> wants, of course, and, and this year I approached it just a little differently. I was just gonna back away and just kind of observe it. But what's interesting is, is uh, if you take a look at our custom question number three in the survey, it asks, the question was, please rate the importance of the city of Sioux Falls making investments in the following. Guess what the top two well, guess what the number one 
item was, was streets, 98%. The second one was traffic flow with 93%. So not that I'm right, but <laughs> I'm, I think maybe the opportunity here is that for sure, for sure, putting that money into those, all the street projects that are on this list absolutely reflects what we just learned from the citizens. Now that amounts to, I've done some math while you were talking. I've done some math and with the new, number, new numbers from Mark, it, uh, it equates to 1.385. That leaves nearly 400,000 for other things, which I think should all be included other things, but uh, let's start with that. Can you do theoretical you know, on your little interactive thing, Dave? Can you? Can I, can Just, I ask Greg? Yeah, go ahead. Did Dave. that include the traffic signal installation and all that too? So all those intersections, and it, you, you didn't include 60th Street, but you did include 26th Street for the adaptive. Right. I just used the new number that he gave, the 210. Okay. 210 okay. is for Thank East 26. Yeah. Okay, Kenny. Another question for Greg. Um, in previous years, Greg, when we did these type of things or taking a look at those extra monies that we had, we were always looking for shovel-ready you know, impact uh, projects. And what I'm seeing a lot of these street projects are just design. And I guess that sort of, to me, doesn't say shovel ready. But can I ask, though, doesn't the um, traffic signal system installations, the 26th Street, 33rd, and Sertoma, aren't those installations? Those are not what I was questioning. Okay. Uh, the, uh, let's see. You're looking at the, just the ones that Mr. Cotter said were designed. So yeah, the traffic capacity improvements, that right. was for just the a one design. that's on number seven, right. Uh, also 8th Street to Fairfax, Fairfax to Cliff Avenue was also a right. design. So those, I, I sort of question those because normally what we've gotten from the administration before is shovel ready projects. So those, those are just two that I question otherwise I don't question the rest of the street projects or traffic. Okay, so Dave, did you put in all the street stuff for us? The tree, not. <laughs> okay, so what does that do for us? That gives us a balance of 409,000 remaining. Lori, is that live? Is that Mike in front of him live? Yeah, Can you turn that on? So you can, okay, so that's, okay, so yes, yes, absolutely, go ahead, Sue. Number. Yep, Dave, do you want to, Is it on? are you on? make it better for people that are trying to understand what we're doing, Dave. It's tech support. Or you can do a fancy Excel spreadsheet, but you can't turn on a mic. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dave, you're going to go through the list. We do. If we do all this, the streets, we'll have four hundred nine thousand. But would you, Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. But would you go through specifically which ones we're talking about? The X's ones. Yep, the ones he's got it with X's. So Marion Road, from I got to get to my from Maple to Sixtieth for five hundred fifty thousand. Traffic signal system installations, 26th Street and Red Oak for 60,000, 33rd Street and Sycamore for 90,000, Sertoma Avenue near Roosevelt High School, 90,000, then 8th Street from Fairfax to Cliff, 100,000, and then adaptive traffic signal systems on East 26th Street for 210,000, mm -hmm. then intersection traffic capacity improvements. For 75,000 at those 6th, 41st, and 37th, and then Prairie Avenue from Bailey to Madison for 250,000. 
I would argue also that the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I no, just, go ahead. That's um, fine. That, that the uh, ADA that we had al always talked about was our uh, basically streets also, uh, especially the um, accessible bus stops and the curb ramps. Mm -hmm. So I would argue that those should be in there. Correct. Okay. And Dean. The and the chairlift for $15,000. So put them, can you put those back in there while we're having this conversation? Dean first and then Kermit. I would go along with Rex. We, most of us, I think, quite publicly made our support known for getting us into compliance with the ADA requirements, and I, I think that needs to stay one of the top priorities. And I would go along with Councillor Anderson, too. You know, engineering is great, but I don't know where those are in the budget for the future. But if we're ready to do something, put a shovel in the ground, or make traffic signal systems better, like every one of those, the traffic signal ins Priority. system installations, Bailey, those are by schools, each and every one of them. I and some of them with school way. crossings that don't have th that safe. So I, I think we need to keep those, but um, those that aren't ready, I mean, if they're just engineering at this point, we won't see a real quick benefit. I mean, eventually it'll get done, but so, I mean, you save 250 on Bay, on Prairie Avenue and you save another 100,000 on 8th Street, that's 350,000, which almost satisfies the ADA curb ramp upgrade for 375,000. Okay, Kermit's next. Yes, I, I strongly believe in uh, having a lot of money go to the roads, <clears throat> but I think there's an even more of a number one priority, and that is, if you're in an emergency situation here in Sioux Falls, like we were a few weeks ago with the ice storm and so forth, we want the police to be able to operate. We want them to be able to operate all their computers in their own building. And so consequently, I think the law enforcement center generator uh, should be the number one priority. We work from there, and then we figure out how much money is left over for roads and also possibly ADA. Okay, Greg? All right, that's where I was. Last time we met was about on the generator, but uh, but first on the engineering, the, uh, the the principle is you have to get the engineering done. You have the land acquisitions done in order to get the next step done, which is the wider, smoother road. And so we have to start as soon as we can in order to get there. And any any delay of that just uh, just adds to the problem. And so I think engineering is a part of the solution. I, and I understood the, uh, the question. And there's, there's a lot of valid in the idea of a shovel ready or not. But I, I still believe that the engineering is important. It's all part of it. It's not, uh, it, it's all part of it. It's just part of the bigger picture. But, but as well, on the, on the law enforcement center, I had the discussion with some other people. Because I, I stated my issue there that safety is number one. It starts there and, and everything else is just conversation, so to speak. The, uh, the fact is that they went through a power outage and was still able, and they were still able to operate. Gives me a signal that it's capable of handling what we really, in the essence, really need. It's in the budget, it's in the plan, it's in the cycle. And based on what I've come to learn over the years and through this survey is, is uh, identified that there's other priorities that are first for the public. And I think this is our chance to give them exactly what they want. Okay, Entman, then Anderson. Well, I made my checklist here too, yeah. <laughs> just like you, Greg. So we'll give me 300, 300, come on. Yeah, yeah, I know, here we go. Well, I had down um, the ADA um, improvements first for about 436,000. Then I had Marion Road in there at the 550,000. Um, we just need that road. It's a major entrance from our uh, from our interstate system, and with all the construction that we have going on on Russell and stuff, it's it's in dire need. And this, it's my understanding, isn't reconstructing. It's just making it livable for about the next six years or so. At which time we're going to have to upgrade that to an urban urban uh, roadway. But then I also put in there the fire department. There's no doubt that safety is a big issue. And I stuck in the station alerting system at 290,000. So I had about a 1.2 million there uh, to start. Uh, and then, of course, I figured more roads and some of the planning that was mentioned before, I think, is also very important. But that's where I was to start with my list. OK, then Kenny. Can I uh, have Mr. Cotter come back up yep. again, please? Yep. <clears throat> Uh, 
Thank you, Mark. Yes. Um, let's discuss these uh, projects that are in design and what, how long it would take after the design was completed. What's, what's the timeline on these? Um, well, the first one is uh, A Street from Fairfax. And, and the critical piece, we've already purchased the most important piece of right away, which is the flower box that exists there. Uh, it's not a lengthy design. And I would expect that, um, you know, we're discussing this. I would expect by May, your final resolution on selected projects go forward. The authority is actually there probably by the end of May. Um, you're probably at a 90-day design, and then ultimately you're ready if there's no additional right away. So we also tried to pick projects that are uh, short time frame to design. We can, you know, turn out very quickly. So the A Street design, um, I don't believe would take very long. And then we'll also know by the uh, mid-summer that if we have dollars available, we could take that to the market and bid it. Um, if we bid it even this year and it's the first project next year, that's, uh, that's an option. The intersection capacity improvements to be able to capture any time you can add capacity at existing intersections, just allow more traffic to move through that green cycle is good. It is critical that we, we get ahead of these, ultimately get them designed. Two out of the three um, are public entities to actually go out and capture the right of way. Um, the 6th Street and Sycamore and 37th and Minnesota. Um, and so to me, those would be designed in a very short time, even shorter than what you'd see um, 8th and Cliff design. They're probably a 40-day design period to capture those two. Um, capturing the right-of-way at 41st in Minnesota, that's going to take some time. Okay. And where are these in the CIP? You know, at, from time to time, we ask uh, our, our team, our traffic team, tell us where some strategic locations to either expand our current arterials or collectors. And so these are the most apparent needs. And so they can be in any of those pooled projects from an expansion, reconstruction, um, or maintenance if they would fall into that. So this one would... Uh, the majority of Lake Six and Sycamore that would fall into the Arterial Street Expansion Program. Yeah, go ahead, Kenny. So if they aren't approved here today, more than likely we're going to see them in a couple months anyway in the CIP. We're going to see them, uh, yes. As uh, design. As design, and, and ultimately then that gets acted on in September, October time frame, and, and then rolls out for your next five years. So you'll still still have the opportunity to complete next year then. Uh, these certainly, small, these smaller projects. Yeah, anything that we have here are our next top priorities. Right. Okay. Thank you. And then the last one is Prairie Avenue, Bailey Street. That's concrete pavement rehabilitation. So that's uh, uh, that's an extension of the current project. That's more joint and panel repair uh, to finish out that project. Now that one isn't a design, is it? That no. one's just that's you've already a got concrete everything panel ready repair. to go yep. on that one. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, I'm going to invite council to look at look at your screens. You sh should be able to switch them from TV to just the screen, which is what is what Dave is showing on the big screen in the in Carnegie. Look at the red checks that he has now. ADA lift chair for health, ADA accessible bus stops for transit, ADA curb ramp upgrades in various locations, Marion Road, traffic signals, 2633rd Sertoma, then the 8th Street from Fairfax to Cliff, East 26th Street, the Puck thing, and the Prairie Avenue from Bailey to Madison. And then look up on the upper right corner. Those numbers are accurate. The total right now is 1.7. With those red Xs, that equals 1.786 million. We have 48,000 remaining. Let's look at those red Xs now. Do they stay? Do they go? How do we feel, Dean? I was going to suggest, why don't we just go down that list and just get consensus on each one? Okay. Leave it or, leave it or go. On the well, X's? Yeah. yeah we're very okay, are we working with the X's, or do you want to deal with ones that don't have X's yet? Just the X's for now, and All then right. let's figure out. Because I think most of us have identified these as our priorities. Right. We might have others, I think that's but right I think too. we can agree on these. Because a couple. I think we're real close. Mm -hmm. Okay, ADA lift chair is the first red X. Thumbs up, thumbs down, Kermit, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to have a difficult time with this because I guess I'm still so strongly in favor of the law enforcement center generator. And so, you know, I'm going to be saying, well, no on these because 
Okay. Uh, I, I don't want to degrade alerts. the ability of the police force to uh, an yeah, emergency I, I here. Right. Yeah. Do and we the know system is on the early two? alerting My system? Priorities. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, how would you like to do this? Let's, I, you know what, let's stick with this. Let's do the red X's right now. And let's see what's left. First over. and see what's left. ADA lift chair is the first red X. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, no's on that. I have one no. Okay, I'm going seven to one-ish. We're just consensus building again here. We'll leave that one there for now. Um, the second red X is ADA accessible bus stops. Yeses. I'm seeing thumbs up, head nods, everybody's in. Okay, that one stays. Um, ADA curb ramp upgrades in various locations. Yeses yes. all the way through. No. 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 No from Kermit. Okay, Greg? Okay, all right, I've got seven to one on that one. Again, just consensus. Uh, Marion Road from Maple Street to 60th, again, just mill and overlay kind of thing. Clean it up. Everybody's in. Kermit, no. Kermit saying no. Okay. Seven to one on that one. Okay, traffic signal system installations, 26th and Red Oak. I've got thumbs up. No. No from Rex. No, no, no from Kermit. I'm getting, that makes, <laughs> I'm liking this. We look like we're rating the movies now. This is good. <laughs> I have two no's on that one. 33rd Street in Sycamore, again, traffic signals. Um, thumbs up, no from Rex, no. no from Kermit. Everybody else, yes. Sertoma Avenue near Roosevelt, yes. Yes is no's from Rex, no from Kermit. No. Okay, 8th Street from Fairfax to Cliff. No. We got no's on this no. one. I'm no on that one as well. I've got one yes, all right. Take the red X off of that one, please. East 26th Street Adaptive Traffic Signal System. This is the puck in the, so thumbs up. What am I, what am I seeing? No from Rex. No. I'm getting a no from, okay, I've got three no's and five yeses. We'll leave it for now. <clears throat> and then the last one that has a red X right now is Prairie Avenue from Bailey Street to Madison. No. No's, no's. Okay, take the red X off of that one. <clears throat> okay, now let's go up and look at um, put the red X into the generator at the top, and what does that do for us? It explodes it, of course, which we knew it would do. We knew that would happen. So what are we willing to trade if that were something that we wanted to do? Well, we're going to see if we, do, roll around and see if we're Okay. To keep it in. Who wants it in and who doesn't want it in? I want thumbs up or thumbs down. Again, remembering that it's in the CIP for 2015, I'm seeing all thumbs down. No. Except for Kermit. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're taking, and, and Rex is up. All right, I have two up and the rest down. I'm taking the red X off of there, thank you. Station alerting system replacement. Yes or no? I've got yeah. lots of ups. Yeah. All right, we're putting her in there. We got eight to nothing on that one. What does that do for us now? Use 108. 108,000. What would you like to do with that? Now, again, before we go any further, we have 108,000 left. Are we comfortable with the red X's? Look at them again. Boy, you do a good job of this. <laughs> I, I'm full of this it's all about, okay, kids, what are you willing to trade? <laughs> all right, then, what, if you have 108,000 left, what would you like to do with that? How about that 8th Street? No, I'd like the tractor. Oh, <laughs> Sue wants a tractor. See, and my question was, is the fire department starting a garden? You know, <laughs> that was, if it's a tractor. I'm in on the tractor. Anybody else in on the tractor? I am. I could live, yeah. I Training live our firefighters, yeah. guys. Yeah. And they got, what, 93% rating on the, uh, we should be right. supporting the fire station, right? I'm good. Okay, so we're putting a red X in the tractor. Except we got to remember what, what, what our friend down there in the end has talked to us about, about streets. And there's a, the 100,000 that would just about take care of everything at the, uh, at 8th Street from Fairfax to Cl Cliff. Once yeah. again, that's just design. It would just oh, be that just, is just yeah. design. And do we, do right. we have to get design. additional land for that? It's already been Mark? purchased. Mark? All of it? All the land is do there. Do you know all the land is there for the right away for eighth to Fairfax to Street? No, no. Fairfax to Cliff. We may need still a sliver of land, if you will. You'd have to purchase it? We'd probably have to purchase it, but I would expect, and it's just a little bit to the west of the flower box oh, as we make that transition over to line up that offset street. <clears throat> so, okay. yep. Okay, thoughts? You'd have to trade the tractor for that, folks. I still want the tractor. All right. 
Okay, let's look at the red X's again. Station alerting system, tractor, ADA lift chair, ADA accessible bus stops, ADA curb ramp upgrades, Marion Road from Maple to 60th, traffic signal system installations in three locations, and East 26th Street adaptive tra traffic signal systems. You put the tractor in it, so that leaves 63,000, doesn't it? That leaves 63,000, wow. Is there another avenue that we could use to get the law enforcement generator upgrade? It is in the uh, 2015. Yeah, I know. 2015, yeah. yeah. But if we, f if there is a majority here that feels that it is a Tracy, is necessary, there way we do that. Is there some other way that we could finance that other than this? Because I was with I was with Enneman, uh, Councilor Enneman also during that time, and it is, it is not a good building well it, it's not a good building to be in when it's uh, got a fluorescent light uh, in one hallway <laughs> and that lights the whole hallway and you've got so what, again three or Tracy, four what are our floors? options if yeah. we wanted to make an amendment to a budget what what uh, what can the council do this is a capital budget which is different than the operating budget that That's has correct. the reserve in it right there is no reserve in the capital fund so what what your wrestling over here today, this 1.8 million is in effect the reserve in the capital fund. So if, if you want to fund the generator uh, and you don't have enough of the 1.8, the only other place is to take it from some other project. Right. Could we, question? Yeah, go ahead, Kenny. Could we not also move this up in the capital? The council has the ability of doing that also. Move it up to 2013? In our in our next capital on the next update for 14, right? We can move it around in those conversations. We can move this it up summer. during CIP mm -hmm. also. Yep. So I mean, it's something we don't have to forget. Yep. And if we feel this summer it's it's that important, then we can we can make that happen. Jim, go ahead. Can I ask a question, Tr Tracy? Jim, for that, I I do have a question on that. The the storm did bring up a couple of other things. I mean, this is really a great process and. Uh, everybody's touched on some good things and all the departments have done a good job of putting a list to us. Um, but the storm did bring up a couple of other areas where I think that we do have some efficiencies where generators or backup systems might possibly be warranted. One of them is Carnegie, if I'm not mistaken. We do not have a backup system for here and we are doing the, the city's business here also. And I believe, didn't at City Hall, didn't we uh, uh, bring in a temporary generator uh, it's City Hall, or is there a system back? City Hall has a permanent generator. Okay, and then I noticed that uh, uh, City Link, um, there's also needs for a generator for for there too. So I don't know. Has the administration? Uh, uh, I know the mayor had mentioned at that point in time that needs did arise, were brought to our attention because of that storm. Um, is there a plan being worked out or something to address those those needs throughout the city? Prior to the ice storm, when, the, when they, we had the fire downtown uh, that put this building out of power, I think uh, shortly after that, the mayor asked for all the city facilities to be evaluated and, and uh, for the purposes of determining which should have, uh, should be equipped for uh, backup power, whether, and there are a couple ways to do that. You can have, a, like City Hall does, a permanent generator. Uh, that's there and available all the time where you can equip the building so that you can very easily uh, bring in a portable generator and, and provide power. Uh, in some cases, that's a much more economical, much more prudent way to do that. So uh, those, all those city facilities are being evaluated, okay. to my, to my okay. knowledge. Uh, I don't think that's been completed yet, however. Good. Thank you. Okay, Rex? Yes, uh, Patty. With, with what's happened, is, as Councilor Enneman said, are you, um, have you decided to move up the 600000 or $800,000 uh, in your capital budget? You said sixteen. I said 15. 15. 15. 15. Right now it's still just in 2015. We were just kind of waiting to see what would happen in this process. Okay. Okay, Dean, and then Sue. Yeah, I'm going to totally change gears on us here. We got $63,000 left. <clears throat> and um, that's okay unless we want to talk about the generators. Um, let me ask Sue, did you have something yeah. related to that? Or uh, I was just switch? wondering with, 
and I had brought this up at the last, how are expenses split between the city and the county? Mm -hmm. oh, on the generator. On, yeah, because the, I, it was my understanding that the entire cost for the generator was 800000 and so the city would be paying entirely for it. In a, agreement with Minneapolis County, uh, the city's responsible for all CIP projects. Okay. They do assist with utilities and building upgrades that are like, uh, like building repair type things. They'll pay a percentage of their cost, but for big CIP projects, it's in the agreement, I have it here. Okay, thank you. Okay, generator related right now. Kermit first and then Yeah, uh, Patty, uh, my concern here with the, the current generator we had and how it operated during the ice storm, is it a greatly degraded police operations? Can, can you say how much police operations were degenerated by, degraded I, can, I should say as a I result of that? I can say for sure, I can tell you that, you know, um, there was, there were, they had nothing but telephones that they were able to use. The computers were gone. Um, so they wouldn't be able to look up and work on cases. Mm -hmm. uh, word processors, the people in our records section weren't able to work, and our uh, crime lab was not no longer. We also don't have any HVAC uh, during mm -hmm. that time frame. So heat, um, if it's, there was no heat, no HVAC at all. Because my concern is, if I can just say, is that you know, maybe in the next six months we'll have another emergency and we'll have the same situation, which is not good. Okay, Kenny's next. I got a whole list. Hang on, guys. Kenny's next. Um, <clears throat> two questions, Chief Lyons. Number one, uh, was the cause of your power outages there overhead wires also because we're in the core area? Or are those wires underground for that facility? Yeah, Eric, do you want to come up? Thanks, Eric. Not very long. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> come bail her out. Wasn't a day or two? It was four hours. Good question. I'm Eric Jalkin, facilities manager for the city. The cause of the power outage for the law enforcement center and also the one at City Hall, but City Hall was covered under a permanent generator, was caused by uh, and I spoke to Mike Burkhardt about this today. It was caused by the transmission lines that come into the town. And I guess that, they're above ground then? Yes, they're above ground. Okay. Then my second question would be on the generator, how many days can you run that generator before it runs out of fuel? Well, that depends on the size of the tank that you would purchase with the generator. Um, the one at City Hall, we have a two-day supply when you have the building under full power, and um, we d didn't have any problems with getting a vehicle from, or a fuel supply from the um, fleet to fill us back up. And the one up at the law enforcement center, I would expect we would go with at least the same fuel supply in that installation. But well, we could look at getting a larger one. We'll, we can look at that as we design the generator. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then Greg is next in my list. In Great. My list. Uh, I'm not sure who to ask. Or to, of course, I'm not advocating <clears throat> because I think it should all be on the streets. But, uh, still talking about generator. But right. I, right. Okay. But I still think it's a fair question to ask. How many times has the building been out of power? And uh, was the metro management... Uh, 911 center affected? Those would be key questions to ask. Not that I need to know, because I'm so just getting it from you. Patty, can you answer those questions? Yeah. Hey, it's also been two to three times in the last couple of years that we've lost power to the building. Two to three? Yeah. Two or three? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. To the law enforcement center. Law enforcement what about Metro center. Management, the 911 center? I, I couldn't speak to that. No. That's a t totally different building, so I don't okay. know if that's if that was affected or not. I only bring that up because I think that's a central central nerve system for the city's safety response team, and I believe it was not affected. So we're talking about 
you know, the evidence room with all the drugs and beer and things, the uh, the coolers there, the computers and the heating and cooling in the in the building, but this, the key central uh, nervous system, that Metro, that 911 service was intact. And I think that's what Councillor Kermit was uh, alluding to. And so I think we're good. I mean, that's, that's, that's all. Okay. I wasn't alluding to that, okay. but uh, <laughs> once again, I just, it, it seems just wrong to have a period of time where the police force cannot fully do their job. Okay, good. Thanks, Kermit. I've got Sue asking now. How long was it out? Off and on, um, boy, I would say one day, an hour to go, oh, two or two yeah. hours, could you? I know we were idle for a while. On Wednesday, the power would go on and off. Um, there was about five hours where we were on the generator at City Hall because the power out, the power would come on, flip back off, come on, flip back off. So uh, there was probably about an hour and a half that it was off at for sure. And at like up at the law enforcement center where they had been on the generator and in the dark. But um, on and off that day, it was about five hours that okay. it just kept flipping. Okay, I'm gonna stop conversation on the generator. Thank you, Eric and Patty. We'll, we'll see where this goes. Now, Dean was next, wants to talk about the 63,000 left. This is taking way longer than I expected. And so I'd like to see if we can come to some, some consensus here. Comments about the 63,000. Uh, two, I guess. Um, first of all, maybe from Tracy. Still here? Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> Wake up. He's, he's <laughs> unconscious in the back. <laughs> really? um, if we don't spend the money, w w where does this money go? Carry over. It stays in the capital fund. It stays and, in the capital fund, and it's there for us. Projects, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. That, that was my, okay. I guess, question there. Now the other question. We have one other that we've been kind of debating off and on, and that's the state theater. And there's two things there, and there's a projector and a, and a lift chair. And I know that these can be broken down separately, and I was wondering if Mr. Williamson, Steve, can you Steve, tell yeah, us? Yeah, can you tell us how much for each of those? Steve Williamson, Executive Director, State Theater. Um, we have already... Uh, sent the uh, projector out for bid and all the material that goes with it. And that is uh, $63,000. <laughs> <laughs> a little in change. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, got the, I've got it in the back. And then the, uh, the accessibility lifts would be about uh, $22,000 for two of them. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Steve. All right. Let's come to consensus here. Look back at the red X's. They leave us 63000 you so comfortable with those? Kermit, you want to comment? Um, no, I voted no before on, on these because I don't think that still, I still believe what we've heard that the law enforcement generator is so much important than anything else on this list. Okay. <clears throat> Any other comments, thoughts? Greg. On the ADA uh, curb cuts, if, uh, if, if Mark could maybe help us through this, I don't know if, uh, if you don't mind. The, yeah, uh, no. the idea of the, uh, we're certainly aware that we're out of compliance. Yes, we need to get out of that. I mean, I get that. But I don't know that, how much does this cover? Does, are we out of the, are we in compliance if we spend this money? Complete? Um, not completely, because we've got, you know, we've got a plan of the next three to five years that we're going to be going into neighborhoods that not only need curb ramps, but they need valley gutters. Um, and so what our team did is then work with the ADA Review Board and they mapped all the ones with our GIS, and they identified an additional 88 ramps that would be added to our 100 ramps that we're already planning to do this year. So the 375,000, they're essentially every, every landing is a separate design. Um, so this would bring you into, this would bring another 88 ramps into compliance. We've got about another 90 barriers that we would say are on good streets that have some life left. And then in the next three to five years, you know, each year we're doing uh, 350 plus blocks of mill and overlay streets. And when we go into those neighborhoods, we also upgrade settled curb ADA ramps. And so some of these are in the very near future that we wouldn't want to jump ahead and do that work. And then ultimately, just a year or two later, come back and 
mill and overlay. So um, I do have a graphic. Wouldn't you know? Of course he does. <laughs> He's always prepared. <laughs> It pays to be prepared, right? Um, so uh, just two pictures off to the left-hand side, the, the, the most deteriorated street. Those are where we plan our mill and overlay areas. And so you see where all that water travels through an intersection. That's where a valley gutter would go in. And then we would also upgrade the handicap ramps at the same time. That's the ideal time. But we know now with working with David and the ADA review team, it's important to um, you know, bring more of these into compliance shorter term than longer term. The, the good street that's on the, um, is in the upper photo, those are the ones that after this, there'd still be about 90 of those throughout town. The 88 ramps that would be identified with these dollars are shown in black. And so those have been in one area clustered over by Kiwanis Avenue. And then you'll see a number of those spot locations throughout town. And then the blue would be the other uh, total of 400 that we'll capture in the next three to five years. Okay? So the ADA uh, Accessibility and Review Board has seen the plan. They like it. And so I just wanted to make sure that um, you didn't take away from here tonight that um, you'll be in total compliance. There's a really good plan, and ultimately we'll get it executed for you. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, I'm looking back at the red X's again. Are we good with them? We need a consensus tonight. We I'd like to make a motion that we... Uh, we're not going to make a motion. We're not going to make a motion. What are oh, we going to do? We're going to do a consensus. If we're okay with this, we will ask... Can I would ask. like to add uh, uh, 63... I'd like to add a, a red X down on the uh, State Theater projector for 60, 63,000. That'll take mm -hmm. us into the... Uh, take us uh, using everything. Sounds good to me. Any thumbs up or down on that one? You got down, down... We got a down. We got we got five to three. It stays. Again, consensus. Um, what we're going to do is ask staff to draft the resolution based on the red X's with the projector with the red X. And then when that resolution comes, that's when you we do still have the opportunity to amend it if we want to. Our preference would be to not do that, but that's up to us. That ends this conversation because it spins us out to zero and I am going to adjourn this meeting and thank you all for your patience and thank you for being at this work session.